Well, all right. Miss Kayla Harrison, it's good to see you again. I mean, yeah. happy Thursday. Just how are things? How are you doing? How good does it feel to be back preparing you know, for a fight? Just how are you right now? Oh, life is good. Life is good. Um, I'm just, I'm in a great mood. I'm grateful. I think that that's been kind of the overlying theme of this year for me and this camp specifically. And um, there's been some bumps. There's been some obstacles but i stay grateful and i stay focused yeah, absolutely and of course we'll get into one of those more recent ones here <laughs> momentarily but uh i mean back on thanksgiving back for the championship and that stuff like is that hard for you at all i mean i know you're a super athlete and how to do what you got to do but fighting on thanksgiving maybe for the family stuff now too is that kind of a problem throw wrenches in plans like um i mean it just kind of a little bit, I guess, you know, it's a sacrifice that you have to make. But one thing that I try and remember is, you know, I'm here, I'm here and present and show up every single day for my kids. So um, when mom has to go do her job, they get it and they understand. And I'm super blessed and supported. You know, I have a crew of people who just like surround my babies with love when I'm gone. So um Last year they went to the fight. This year they're going to stay home. And then I'm going to have a big Thanksgiving celebration the Sunday after uh, after the fight. So it'll be good. Yeah, so it'll then you're, you're not really missing. You're adjusting just a little couple of days back, so you still get to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> we get to have our turkey and eat it too. <laughs> what, a, what a weird... It's always been a weird food choice to me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I mean, it's good and all, but it's not the, the greatest uh, thing you yeah. could have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. I don't, I mean, I, it's tradition, right? Yeah. It's tradition. It's tradition. <laughs> I'm like deeply rooted in tradition. So I'm like, no, we're having turkey. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it is, is mandatory for sure. But the last time I saw you, Kayla, I think was uh, somewhere in Florida for one of the game breads because you were doing a uh, commentary, mm -hmm. which is always cool to see you staying busy in that regard uh, during the time yeah. away from actually fighting. But I didn't get to ask you like how you've been enjoying specifically that because obviously Jorge's shows, game bread, big old kind of different world that we're getting into Absolutely. fun and all but uh just how has that experience been uh for you and your spot i really enjoy it um first of all i'm good friends with george so supporting him supporting what he's doing and him giving me the grace and the opportunity to grow as a commentator and to sort of get my feet wet get you know get comfortable in that position is has been a really i think mutually beneficial partnership and Another fun aspect of it for me is just how like it's it it's our sport and it's most rare, raw, like bare knuckle form. And I didn't grow up in MMA like George mm. did. You know, he literally grew up fighting in the back backyards. And I grew up on this sort of like Olympic circuit. A little different. <laughs> judo, respect, like a very different culture. So for me to be a part of that and to see it and to see behind the scenes and to see how far the sport has grown and he's turned it into like, it's like a, he, you know, these fighters are getting paid real money. It's real, mm -hmm. like, this is like a real thing. Yeah. And I think it's cool to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's always uh... and Robin Black is awesome to commentate with too, by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't mention him. Like he's just such a cerebral, unique thinker and it really makes me sit there and like i usually have like epiphanies like a couple <laughs> life epiphanies as i'm sitting next to him <laughs> yeah he's got that effect doesn't he <laughs> have you had like a standout experience kind of specific moment like you're just talking about kind of the, the overall stuff there but something you're like damn this is uh it's pretty cool like i don't know something stuck with um... you I don't think I have a specific moment. I mean, I do like to get into the cage and do give do interviews. So obviously, like interviewing Junior, that was fun. Yeah, he won his <laughs> fight was great because number one, he's my teammate. He's an amazing human being. I was happy to see him win and to just like practice that sort of being on the other side of the mic um, is good. Is good for me. Like uh, I'm sick of talking about me anyway, so. <laughs> It's good to I like, gotcha. <laughs> get that, like have that opportunity. I enjoyed that. Well, to go off that real quick, like 
has that been a challenge for you? Like kind of detaching, you know, not being biased during commentary is always a thing. It's inherent in us, right? So you, it's hard not to help it. But how has that been, especially with like Junior, for example? Yeah. No, it's not easy. I don't <laughs> I don't enjoy that part because I'm I'm also not like just as a teammate, as a if I'm in someone's corner, I tend to be very vocal. Like I, I'm I'm the loud, obnoxious <laughs> fan in the crowd, like half kick him, you know, like I'm like telling them what yeah. to do. And so it's hard to rein that in and be a professional and, you know, not let the emotions get the best of you. Like, oh, you know, like, I want to look away sometimes. <laughs> like, oh, wait, I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, be professional. Be professional. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, just how it goes. But uh, I think you're doing good. Doing a good job. So uh, it's been fun to, you know, I see. You. Yeah, of course. Of course. And. So, all right, Kayla, well, let's talk about kind of uh, the craziness, the little shakeup here uh, that we got yesterday. So <clears throat> I guess let's start with when did you find out? Was like this as recent as yesterday? When did things kind of happen, I guess? Yeah. Straight, straight up yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> I, found out on the, I found out on the Internet. <laughs> oh, OK. That's fun. <laughs> so, I mean, like from there your had been talks, there had been talks, but, um, you know anybody anytime anywhere i don't care is it disappointing at all just because of like you were supposed to fight once before already and then this i mean i don't know if you know any specific reasons they just said that she failed to unfill fulfill like you know her obligations or whatever like i guess how 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 does it feel in that regard just knowing what you know <laughs> um i mean i'm not surprised and I have been training for the last year coming off of a loss with the intent of going out and um, showing the world once again, why I, I have the potential to be the greatest ever. So um, who I face makes no difference. You know, it could be King Kong in there. I'm going to go out there and, and I'm going to put on the best performance of my life and, and be the best version of Kayla Harrison you've ever seen. And the rest is just, you know, good luck. God bless. And for you, like how much of a person are you even who, I mean, of course the coaches will do all this stuff, but putting focus specifically on your opponent, like putting effort into specific preparations. Cause like, if you're just really yeah. going more on yourself, then this kind of thing doesn't matter as much. Right. For sure. And I think, like you said, the coaches do a really good job of game planning Albeit my game plan doesn't ever really change that much. Yes, right. <laughs> but, you know, my coach Anderson, for example, will have like a he'll have a, a album in his phone with like highlights, video highlights of previous fights of the opponent. He'll have a notebook with like how many times they throw certain things per fight. And then we have drilling sessions where he literally throws the things they throw and I do whatever it is I'm supposed to do. Um, so they break it down, they get super you know, technical with it. And I'm grateful for that. And then I go out in the fight and I like, <laughs> I don't, don't do it. <laughs> um, so, but no, I do feel like this camp, I think because I had a year with no fight, right. That mm -hmm. I was able to get so much more comfortable in all the different aspects of fighting, yeah. not just, crap, not just like just everything. And more importantly, putting it all together. Mm. Like, yeah, I can do 10, you know, I can be great when I'm doing boxing rounds, but can I be great with my boxing while it's MMA? You know, like the range, the the distance, the, oh, but there might be a head kick coming. The, all of this, like this, like human chess match that you have to figure out. Because I had a year of no opponent, I got to get really comfortable being uncomfortable like I was a sparring partner, you know, I was showing up for girls and like being orthodox and being a striker and throwing, you know, I got to be a sparring partner and grow and it's made me much more well-rounded. It's made me much more comfortable and I'm excited to show that off. And like this camp, I was excited because I got to specifically train for someone, which I hadn't done for a while, but in reality, I, I stand by what I say. It doesn't matter who steps in the cage with me. I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be comfortable and I'm going to, um, you know, this is 
I shine under the lights. This is my moment. Here I come. Of course, coming back with a vengeance, especially, you know, after the last time and all the time making you wait. My goodness, you're probably just ready to <laughs> crush some faces out there. <laughs> and, uh, it was good for me. It was good. Yeah. Of course. And so that'll be Aspen Ladno. I'm sure if you were watching this season and uh, the fights that she had and, you know, we're familiar with her before that. It was kind of, you know, when she came in, it was one of those names that were like, oh, maybe it'd be fun to see her against Kayla someday. Here we are now. I just yeah. guess like thoughts on her after going through the season, how she did and uh, what exactly you'd expect from her against you. Um, I mean, I don't know how she's going to do. I think it's tough to not have a full camp mm -hmm. to prepare for me so maybe she's been training just like i have in the off season and staying disciplined and being motivated and waiting for her opportunity so i'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's what she's been doing she's young she's hungry she still has a lot left to prove uh i think that she's a great fighter you know she has the capabilities and the talent and the raw sort of ability to be a champion someday but it's not going to be on November 24th. Are you worried at all about kind of weight stuff? Because that's obviously been, unfortunately, a reoccurring theme with her. And on short notice, uh, I mean, more money for you if that yeah. happens. Yeah, not for you, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a professional. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, it's at a catch weight of 150 pounds. So I feel like that's pretty doable. I mean, I don't, you know. I don't can care. control what you can control. Yeah, I don't care. Like, I, I show up, I do what I can do. I, I do my job. I have a good attitude about it. Um, I try and be the best mom I can be, the best fighter I can be, the best teammate I can be. And, you know, the rest is in God's hands. So I know you're not much of kind of uh, a long term planner, maybe, Kayla, but what this is, uh, <laughs> this is should be the last fight for you until free agency again right so i'm curious like any thought you've had a lot of time to think about maybe something so any plan ideas for 2024 yet or what uh no no, no we're two weeks out from a fight and you know i call it two week itis where like i don't want to say i become <laughs> like the Grinch a little bit where it, you know, I cry over spilled milk, but then I'm like, why would I cry? And <laughs> um, the emotions are starting to flow and you're in that, like a little bit anxious, a little bit excited, a little bit staged. So um, no, I'm not thinking about 2024. I'm not even thinking about 1125. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about November 24th and, and Aspen lad and doing my job and being, um, as disciplined as possible up and up to that point, you know, when it's, I think it's easy for us as humans to be distracted right. and to uh, like, Oh, shiny this. Oh, that, Oh, what about this? Oh, this happened in the past or is she like, Oh, this might happen in the future if this and this and this. And, but there is no, like, there's only right now, mm -hmm. really all I'm doing right now is having a conversation with you and talking about something that, isn't real yet you know yeah, yeah. so like, i just have to focus on right now and, and live in the moment and when i do that i have so much more peace than if i get sucked into the where am i gonna go what am i gonna do right. who am i gonna fight like blah, 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 blah. you know i can't control that and it's not happening right now anyways yeah. so yeah totally fair i love that answer but it's still curious so i'm sorry I know, I know. <laughs> You're doing your job. Yeah, yeah. But also on the card too, Kayla, two people you're very familiar with, uh, Pacheco and Maknat Kina fighting for the featherweight title this time around. So I just got to get your thoughts for what the analyst had on and the experience against them. Like, you interested in seeing this fight just as a fan? What is your prediction kind of uh, thoughts on it? You know, what do you think? Who's going to be the champ at 145? Um, yeah, I expect Pacheco to win. Uh, I know that. Maknaktina is very durable. She's tough, um, but five rounds is a lot. I don't think she has the best gas tank, and I just don't think she has the power or the um, maybe technical skills yet to beat someone like Pacheco. You know, she could get lucky there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we have the fights, but my my prediction is Pacheco. 
It was kind of interesting when I was looking at, you know, just the fight a little bit this week and thinking about, you know, you having fought him. Uh, I was curious, like, probably safe to say Larissa's been your toughest opponent, right? I mean, you fought her three times. It's kind of not fair to say anybody else. But aside from her, who would you say has been your toughest opponent before that last fight? Yeah, I think Mark, Mark Nakshina might yeah. be the toughest. Just she was, like, very good grappling awareness, um, didn't accept positions you know was like constantly scrambling and then you had the knee bar threats from really weird positions um but had really high level grappling defense which was kind of frustrating to me um but made me grow so yeah probably those two are the i'm gonna have to think about it (laughs) That's yeah. just what I was thinking, having, you know, yeah, I've been there for that Is one. Is that the only other decision I've had besides Pacheco, I uh, think? Yeah, I believe so, too, yeah. yeah. So probably, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. By default, yeah. <laughs> they survived. <laughs> yeah. On that note, then, um, sticking along with the, the women and all that good stuff, Kayla, I mean, I'm sure you've been hearing about this thing. Maybe you saw my thoughts on it, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, the PFLW, I wanted to uh, still kind of... Uh, not a lot out there about it, but from what you know, I mean, just uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on this? Yeah, thing? you had you had a good, yeah. What did you say? Um, so just from my understanding of uh, what it is or could be, um, in my opinion, I think it's a little bit uh, counterproductive for mm-hmm. the sport of MMA and what we've been fighting for so long, specifically the women, obviously, to get to that stage of the UFC. So making things separate and kind of you know flat out segregating in a way by splitting them apart uh Mm -hmm. is going backwards and not Mm -hmm. necessarily shining in the way that Mm -hmm. it's not as equal kind of so um not a fan myself if that is how it ends up being yeah to be honest with you i haven't heard enough about pflw to comment um from an educated standpoint i did find your take interesting and I just don't know exactly what their game plan is with it. I know they've launched it. I know that they have this initiative to try and bring more equality to women in the sport. Um, but other than that, I haven't heard too, too much. So I'm going to refrain from commenting on it just until I just until I know more. Yes, of course. Fair enough. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's kind of been back and forth there, depending, but an interesting thing. And uh, my opinion is not going to change if it is that way. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But all right, Kayla, well, I will let you get on with the rest of your day. Uh, awesome. Always. It was so good to great. talk to you. Are you going to be at the fight? Yeah, I'll see you soon. I'll be there. All right, so, cool. Two weeks. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's get it. All right, Kayla. All right. Well, have a great rest Bye. of your day. <laughs> Thank you. You too. See ya.